Welcome to another episode of Alia Graphic. Uh, my name is Jurgi, and I'm a librarian at Kingston Libraries in Victoria. And today we have a great guest with us that I've been looking forward to speaking to. He's a secondary school teacher who champions comics and edu comics and graphic novels in education. And he's also our first international guest. Um, so he comes to us from the East Coast of the US. And uh, so Tim, welcome to our show. Thank you so much. Uh, this is actually also my first international interview. So ah, thank you. Uh, uh, so th that works both ways. That's awesome. All right, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> great. So let's begin with the basics. Um, I've, I've given you a very short introduction because um, I don't like talking about others that much, you know, but uh, who is Tim Smith? uh in your own words why are we talking to you uh well i'd have to say i'm a father first and i am the father of of children who learned how to read through comic books um i am a father of a son who has some learning disabilities i am the father of a son who uh whose son was termed a reluctant reader um early on and i watched him give up on school and his teacher did not have any respect for comic books, did not see them as literature. And so his teacher took them away from him and he gave up on school even more. Um, and now my son loves to read everything. He's in seventh grade now. And in fact, companies send him books for free for him to review and to share online. And so I'm a very proud father of my son and my two daughters. And so a lot of what I do is very personal. Um, and it, it's, it's a reason why I, I, I do what I do. Um, I've been a social studies teacher for 20, almost 21 years now. Um, I teach primarily uh, 15, 16, 17 year old students. I am a published author. Um, I write curriculum guides for Scholastic and Macmillan and all kinds of great companies. Um, I present at Comic Cons and educational conferences around the country. And um, I also now work with the United States uh, Department of State, and we do a virtual exchange program with educators literally around the world. Um, in fact, one of the people on our team is from Australia, and um, we teach uh, teachers how to use comic books uh, to encourage their students to find their own voice and to solve local and international problems through comic books. So I am a a very blessed person to be able to do what I do. That's, um, that, there's so much to unpack there. First, <laughs> first of all, first of all, though, I have to go into the personal side of it that you shared there. Um, my story is actually very similar in some ways, you know. Uh, I was the last one in my class to learn to read. I was just not interested whatsoever. Um, so, you know, I procrastinated about it. Um, and basically, I couldn't see the point of learning to read when I could just be having fun with friends, you know. Uh, and eventually, so I was the very last one. Teachers were worried, my parents were worried uh, until, you know, basically one day my dad said, enough, you know. And, and then I learned very quickly because obviously I was kind of ready. But also, um, the, the, the thing that had really got me into reading and, and uh, you know, I basically, I became completely obsessed with reading uh, was comics. And um, a lot of comics in Spanish, so, you know, people wouldn't know them, but, uh, but yeah, they, they really, really got me into reading. And then of course, I, uh, after I read so many comics, uh, I started reading other things, branching out into other things and trying other things. And then obviously I've become a lifelong reader, you know, uh, and uh, now I work at the library as well. <laughs> but, but yeah, so there's so much that resonated with me in what you were saying. Uh, so yeah, that's awesome. That's amazing. Uh, and you're, you're obviously doing a lot of things. So yeah, uh, but about you, when did you get into comics? Uh, and have you always read them or did you get into them at, at a later point? Um, I've always read comics. I mean, I don't remember the, the day that I started, but um, 
you know, I'm always really honest with, with my students um, that I had a rough childhood and uh, it was the comics that I could get a hold of um, that kind of saved me. Um, it, you know, the, you, you take a Batman or, or you take uh, somebody from the X-Men who had an awful childhood and they decided to not give up, not give in, but instead to go out and literally save the world and look out for other people. And that was my solace when um, I was able to get away from the issues in my childhood um, and read these comic books. And it gave me hope. Um, it, it, it gave me a reason really to become a teacher, um, you know, Charles Xavier and being the professor. And it always resonated with me. Um, and I didn't have a lot of money growing up. Um, and it's why now I buy <laughs> as many comic books as I can get. Um, yeah. But whenever I had them, I read them all the time. So from the earliest I can remember, they just really resonated with me. Yeah, you, you, you actually, you, you mentioned the X-Men there a couple of times. And uh, X-Men always resonated with me in that sense as well. You know, I could see so many um, issues reflected there that, really resonated with me and made me um, inspired me to to be a better person <laughs> as well yeah. so uh, and, and uh, I think especially during that whole Claremont era Chris Claremont era you know that he touched on so many uh, social issues but also you know um, grow uh, uh, growing up teenage kind of era kind of uh, issues and things like that and yeah that so that's a really good one yeah yeah. Um, so w was there any particular favorite apart from what you've mentioned already that uh, as you grew up or any turning point where you thought this is just incredible, you know, um, and really affected you? Uh, I, I would say as an educator, um, I can remember almost to the day when it became a thing for me. Um, it was so growing up, I loved I, I, I grew up in, a, in an urban environment and I love uh, American hip hop, public enemy and, 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 every, and everything. And I also love comic books, but I would never tell anybody that I liked comic books because that wasn't cool. Um, and so I love the fact that that has changed now. But when I first started teaching, I didn't use comic books at all in my classes. Um, but when Miles Morales, the new Spider-Man first came out, I started talking to my history to my social studies students about, hey, isn't this cool? Our comic books are starting to change. And I had a student, a, 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 a African American student, a young man in my classroom, who was really maybe he was shy. I don't. We just had never connected. And um, he came up to me after class, and it's the first time we really had a personal conversation. And so here was a black kid who. Now this is when we had President Obama, right? So we had a black, our first black president. <laughs> This kid was more impressed that Spider-Man looked like him than our president did. And I just was like, okay, so we're on to something here. And then I had the issues with my son. And so I went back to college to get my master's degree as a reading specialist. And I was the only male in the entire program. Um, and I was the only non-elementary school teacher in the whole program. This idea that we only teach reading in like grades K through three, yeah. where we need to teach reading all the way through university level. Um, sure. So I kept being given these studies about how boys didn't like to read. And so I started asking questions. Well, what are you giving your boys to read? And not one person mentioned comic books. And so I made that connection to my son and my professors love them. They said, go ahead, do the research. So this was back in 2007. Um, and I started doing the research and I wound up writing my master's uh, uh, paper on using comic books in the classroom. Um, and it just kind of went from there. Yeah, um, well, um, I actually have uh, some experience in teaching as well. And I was teaching secondary. I did media studies and the diploma of education as well before librarianship. And, and um, yeah, I found that there was a bit of resistance from some teachers, uh, you know. Um, I, I think it's changing, but there was some resistance about that. And to me, I didn't understand it because 
you know, I, I think that um, comics uh, actually have multiple literacy superpowers. That, that's what I often say, multiple literacy superpowers. Now think about that, you know, because you're working on different literacies with it. And, and you think about it, it's, they're complex texts because you're putting a lot of different visuals and words in the juxtaposition of them together to, to make meaning of the whole text, you know? So, um, yeah, that always really gets me. <laughs> but anyway, we, we may talk more about that later. But uh, uh, I think you, uh, you already said what you, what you teach, so that's great. Um, and so how did you get into using comics in the classroom? And was there a turning point? That you mentioned Miles Morales there and the moment of realization. So when, when you started in the classroom um, using comics, um, how did that go with the students? Uh, I'd have to say my students always remark on how excited I get when I use comics in the classroom. And so I'm very passionate about it. And so I always encourage teachers to whatever your passion is, incorporate in your classroom um, because it is contagious. It's literally contagious. Um, and so when I get excited, the students get excited and it's just it's this feedback of, of all these things. And so we started experimenting in my classroom and then um, PBS, right? An American uh, TV and news station, yep. um, right? I, I started uh, sharing on online about the things that I did in my classroom and they loved what I did. And they asked me to start writing some articles for them. And then suddenly my classroom became part of a worldwide discussion. Um, and we found out how much comics mean to people around the world. Um, and so we started using comic books as artifacts in my classroom. So if you have a comic book, so I'll put out comic books from the 1950s and 60s and today, and we take a look at how times have changed. We take a look at how technology has changed. We take a look at gender roles. We take a look at representation. Um, we take a look at the letters to the editor. And so just like we might take a look at music, we might take a look at a letter from, you know, a George Washington or comic books are also artifacts and they can tell us a lot about our society. And um, you had said, you know, you had met some resistance from some teachers. I have too. Um, in fact, my curriculum supervisor, initially, she didn't really have an experience with comic books. Um, but once I started publishing for PBS and once I, it's, it's just a lot of people haven't read a comic book since they were a kid and they don't realize the deep and meaningful stories that are there besides the like Hulk smash kind of a thing, that there's a lot more to it than that. Um, and so now I don't just teach with comic books. I also teach with the textbook. I also teach with other sources. Comic books are one tool um, that, I, that I use with everything else. Yeah, 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 that's right. The, the they're just one more tool that you can use, so exactly as you said, you know, um, and it complements everything else. And I think uh, uh, you know, it, it also gets kids excited about it, um, you know, they, if, if they have an interest in it. And, and also, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a different way. And, and, and I think in the classroom very often when you bring something new in, this suddenly interest, oh, wait a second, this is not the same old. What's that about? Okay, you know, and, and, and you pick their interest. So yeah, definitely. Uh, so um, you, you, you mentioned that, that there was uh, a little bit of pushback maybe from some of the teachers and from, um, you know, um, school management and things like that. How did you navigate that if you can? Or any uh, advice on navigating that if any other teacher wants to start on an adventure like this? Yeah, I, I would say when I first started doing this, the, the online community wasn't really there that, that there is now, um, that there are a lot of other teachers who are doing that. Um, I run two Facebook groups of educators. Um, I have a website. There's, you know, you had mentioned the ALA uh, graphic novel roundtable. Um, there's so many fantastic resources. There have been research studies that have been done that show us things like the amount of higher level vocabulary that are um, exist in comic books, um, even more so than adult prose. You're more likely to be exposed to higher level 
unique vocabulary in a comic book than you are in an adult level prose book. Um, so we have the research now to back us up. Um, so I always get that at the end of a presentation, uh, you know, some new teacher who's all, oh my, I want to do this, like, you know, and okay, so you can't just do it from day one. You have to have the research to back you up. Um, and the other thing I also say is, at least here in the States, um, you can have as much violence as you want. You can have as much, in some cases, even bad language, um, foul language in a book, um, and you can get away with it. But an image can get you in more trouble as a teacher faster than anything else. Yes. And so I always say, be right, be very careful about what images, what comics you're using in your classroom too. And as you get the experience, you can roll it out more and more. Um, but I am always very careful to say, my wife is, a, uh, is an English, a, a literature teacher. And I would, I would never say that the graphic novel adaptation of Les Miserables would replace you know, the original text. That's, that's not what we're doing here. No. Um, so comic books are not a replacement. So this is not a battle of this or that. It's like you had said, it's we can use this and that and that to gain a, a you know, a much bigger understanding. Yeah, it's a, it's a different medium, you know, uh, that also has its own benefits and its own, uh, you know, skills that you, you need to, to have to analyze those texts and, you know. Um, yeah, because uh, um, and especially I think it's important in the uh, now, you know, in, increasingly most of the media is multimodal. So you have you have uh, it's a lot more visual and a mixture of visual and text, and that's essentially what comics is, you know. Yeah. And yeah. and I and I feel like also uh, as I said, you know, I. Um, I did many studies. So um, when you're watching a movie, that, that's the other thing as well, that you're, you're getting the visuals and you're getting the audio. Uh, you're not getting text, usually. <laughs> uh, uh, but also, you're not in control of the viewing because you know it goes one second at a time. And, uh, and unless you pause it, that's the way it is. But yeah, whereas with comics, you're in control. You can focus on one panel. You can focus on the whole page. You can uh, you can go back uh, to the previous panel and go back to the next one. Uh, you're in complete control of it, you know. And I think that's really important as well with students. That there's so much that you can do with that. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, I I really feel like to to teach literacy, it's it's an excellent tool. So yeah, it's I always say it's it's comic books is 21st century literacy. It's when we read online, we don't just read left to right and up to, we jump around, we click on things. This is literally what a comic book reader is really skilled at doing. And the amount of images that we are exposed to every single day to make meaning out of, um, a comic book reader can do these. And, and as a history teacher, when I have students pick apart a political cartoon, that's the skill that you do when you're reading a comic book. Yeah. It's literally the same skills. Yeah, critical analysis. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, you uh, you mentioned uh, that you have a couple of Facebook groups uh, for educators. Did you want to flag those? Um, sure. And Australians sure. also join or? Yeah, I have, yeah. So um, the one, my personal page is called, if you search on Facebook, Teaching with Comics. That's my personal Facebook page, Teaching with Comics. But we also have a collaborative group. If you search by comic book teachers, um, these are teachers from around the world. And they'll say, hey, I'm teaching a unit on this. Does anybody have any ideas? And it's a really supportive community. Excellent. So hopefully we have some teachers uh, listening and uh, they can join those groups. Now you yeah. also have a website, historycomics.net. Yes. And it's loaded with resources that, uh, that I assumed you've used in the classroom. And of course, you make freely available for other teachers. Thank you very much. That's amazing. Uh, for someone who doesn't know about it, what can you tell us? What are some of the highlights there on your website? Uh, it's easy to get lost. Because 
Uh, there's lots of things in there. Um, but I put on there my YouTube channel, um, a blog where I literally will walk you through how to use different comic books in the classroom. Uh, the most popular part of my website is um, where I, I upload free online comics that I come across that are great for use in the classroom. Um, so I categorize by, you know, if you're looking for a comic on World War I, you can look on World War I and you'll find a lot of different things there. So as I come across comics, um, I try to update it as often as I can, but it, you know, it's all free. It's just, I love sharing it and I love getting the word out and trying to help people as much as I can. Yeah, that, that's a little bit our philosophy as well. So, you know, when we created the group, we were like, what do we want to do? And, you know, we, we had two main goals and one was raise the profile of uh, comics and graphic novels in all libraries and that includes school libraries of course you know and the other one is uh, you know to raise the profile and promote Australian creators and titles you know and 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 we knew right from the start well everything we do it's not just for us and it's not just for members of Alia it's it's for everyone we're going to make it completely free so uh, our okay. budget is our budget is zero yeah. Uh, and our expenditure is kind of zero and somehow yeah. we balance it but we managed to you know th this is one of the great things these days that you know we can we can talk with different people and we can publish things online and it's it's all you know moderately free <laughs> yeah. yes you know it doesn't cost us too much um uh, anyway um i believe you're also writing the book what can you tell us about the book and what stage are you at? So originally, um, my <laughs> I was supposed to have had my book done by December of last year. And with COVID and everything that had happened, um, I had I my publisher luckily um, said that I could have until the summer to finish. Um, so the way I, I approached my book, and it's called Teaching with Comics is I don't want a whole lot of high level education vocabulary and terminology. And it's literally just, here's some things you can do in your classroom tomorrow. Here are some ways that you can use in a science class or a math class or a foreign language class um, on all different levels. Um, and I work with all levels from kindergarten through university. Um, and so it's just kind of a really easy down to earth, just here's some things to get you started. Um, and I'm hoping I'll, I'll publish other books after that, um, but I just wanted this one to be a really easy to read, really easy to access with a little bit of research um, that you can help to back you up. But with the book also comes my website. So, you know, that's all there. Yeah, that sounds excellent. So, so when is it going to be published more or less? So I, I turn it in in July um, and Hopefully uh, in the fall, at some point, you know, once once my my editor uh, gets it all together and gets it published, it, it should come out at some point this year before the end of the year. I'm I'm really excited. That, that well, that I'm really excited too. That that sounds really cool. That sounds really really cool. Um, we'll make sure to keep an eye out for that one, and to to promote it when it comes out. Um, so. Any last tips for teachers, you know, who, who want to use comics, who maybe are a little bit nervous, who haven't done it before, who may not be comic book readers themselves? Well, yeah, actually, that's a great point. Um, the first thing we need to do, and that's, I'll do this in my book too, but the first thing we need to do is teach our students how to read a comic book. Um, I'm surprised at how many 16 year olds today have never read a comic book before. And so it's really easy. I mean, it's easy for me to read manga from, from the back to the front, if you will, because I'm used to it um, or a comic book to jump around. But I, I have found that my most experienced high level readers can get frustrated reading a comic book because they don't understand how the images lead to the meaning of the story. Um, they don't understand how different dialogue balloons uh, make a difference. They don't understand what happens in the gutter and, and all those things. So we need to slow that down. And I do that in the beginning of my lessons is here's how we read it. 
here's how we pick apart this one panel. Um, and it's really important to do that. Um, yeah. And that's, that's essentially what, uh, what I was saying before, you know, that you have multiple literacies. And, and I'm using the word literacy in a very broad sense there, you know, but you, you have the linguistic literacy, obviously, you have the visual literacy, yes, but then you also need to um, interpret and, and see, okay, well, what's the body doing there? What's the face doing there? So you need to, um, you need to understand that and decode also that, but then you also have the more kind of symbolic uh, things as well, like you know, if if the speech balloon is jagged, it means a different thing. Uh, you have the emanata as well, that means a different thing. If if it's got a sweat drop, what does that mean? You know, if if the page suddenly or the whole background of the page instead of white goes black, why? What does it mean? All those things add to the meaning, and and to teach all that. Uh, you know, you, you really need to unpack a lot of different things. So, um, yeah. It, uh, I, uh, yeah. And, 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 Wait, and, you and other, to say something else, yes. Yeah, I was gonna say the other thing is uh, yeah. a lot of times cost is an issue. Teachers wanna say, well, I can't buy 30 copies of a comic from my classroom. And, and what I say is a lot of times I just use one panel. So comic books come out, you know, weekly. Yeah. Um, and so they're a reflection of what's going on in our world. And so, you know, if, for one thing, um, in Champions, um, I forget the number, but it was written by Jim Zub, there was a school shooting at Miles Morales' high school. Yeah. And I used two panels and I put it up on my smart board as a discussion point for my students. Um, we, there was another one where Batman was dealing with, um, a police officer who had um, racially profiled somebody and Batman got in the middle. So I didn't have to buy 30 copies of the comic book. I literally used one panel to open up a really important conversation in my classroom. Um, so you don't have to spend a gazillion dollars um, in your classroom to do this. Um, you have time to build that up. There are some comics that I do buy 30 copies of, but for the most part, I, I don't have to do that. Yeah, uh, and that's a good point because uh, comics are very expensive. <laughs> so, you know, uh, uh, and uh, exactly what you said, you can use, you know, you can use say, a couple of panels or you can use a page. You don't need the whole thing. You can put it in, in your smart board, in a classroom uh, or the projector or whatever you have. And, and um, you know, then you can maybe have, um, you know, that, graphic novel at the school library, you know, and have one copy or two copies, you know, because because uh, um, it's important to, to, for them to also have uh, those comics accessible, you know, um, and, and, uh, and you're right, it's uh, comics, you know, that get published every week, you know, and, and they so often reflect the, uh, the world we live in. And, I really feel like in many ways, um, comics these days are, you know, more are doing some really incredible uh, work in terms of publishing really personal yeah. and and quite diverse work as well. So, yeah, yeah and 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 it's always, you know, we when I when we teach Frankenstein and we teach about Mary Shelley and we talk about the impact of the Industrial Revolution and why she wrote the way she wrote. And so that's literature and that's okay. So why is it any different if we analyze a song or a comic book that is also influenced by the world? All these things are artifacts of what's going on around us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, well, uh, <laughs> what a great uh, conversation, Tim. Uh, but at the end, um, we always ask our guests to recommend three comics or graphic novels, and they can be new ones that you've read recently, or they can be three of your favorites that uh, you like to use in the classroom, uh, or that you feel um, make a great impact with students. Completely up to you how you want to take this one. Uh, so on, only, it's always hard to, <laughs> to decide. 
Um, I would say um, one is, um, let's see, Jarrett Lerner. Um, and if you go to jarrettlerner.com, he does these fantastic type things in his books where it gets kids writing and interested in literature. Well, he'll start and I'll have students finish. And he actually has a lot of free activities on his website, um, jarrettlearner.com. Um, it's just a fantastic, I mean, also, I mean, certainly buy the book. Um, I would also say in my classroom, I use the March graphic novels, um, which are based on uh, Congressman John Lewis's life during the civil rights movement. Um, and I have class sets of all three of these books and they're just, just amazing. Um, and then I would say my favorite superhero team are the champions. Um, and so this is an ongoing comic book where you've got um, an African-American slash Puerto Rican Spider-Man. You've got a Korean American Hulk. You've got a 16 year old Pakistani American uh, Miss Marvel from Jersey city. I mean, it's just the diversity that we're seeing that my own children are seeing in our comic books today yeah. is what gives me hope for the future. Because when I was growing up, you know, it was like Lando Calrissian and Star Wars was the only diversity. Like here was a black man. Now we have gay characters and lesbian characters and, and transgender characters and Muslim and the whole gamut. And so yeah. that's what's going to move our world forward. So uh, if I had to choose three, those would be my three right now. Great choices, great choices. And um, I, I have to do, say, if, if I can share a little personal story as well. Um, I, uh, I, had a, I had a little girl, Muslim girl, you know, who was kind of looking at the comics um, at the library and wasn't sure what to get and kind of thought, you know, maybe a little bit young, but I think she's kind of ready you know, uh, to, to read this. And I showed her Ms. Marvel and, you know, her face completely changed. Like, what's this? Like to see, for her, it meant so much to see a Muslim superhero, you know? And, um, and, a, and a girl as well. So, you know, it really meant so much to her. Um, and that was a beautiful moment, you know? Uh, and and I have others, but that was a beautiful moment where I realized this just means so much to uh, to kids, you know, to to see themselves represented in these pages, to Absolutely. see that they can be heroes too, to to see their culture uh, represented, uh, and um, yeah, so uh, yes. Uh, I really, really like where comics are going these days. And, and uh, you know, uh, I feel like we're actually kind of in a golden age in many ways. Yes. Uh, yeah. Even though, you know, they say the golden age was like uh, 50, 60 years ago. But <laughs> anyway, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure, Tim. Um, Same. Uh, so uh, please check out Tim's uh, website, historycomics.net. Check out his group as well, Teaching with Comics uh, in Facebook. And, uh, and uh, good luck with the book. Good luck with the book. Thank and, you. And, and with, you know, with everything that's happening in the US. Yes, I'm looking forward to going back to Comic-Con conventions again in person at some point. Yeah, they're, they're just starting to, um, to have some events here. But, uh, you know, it's kind of this starting, but a little bit hesitant, yeah. you know, how, how big can we make it or not? And, you know, still make it COVID safe just in case. Um, so, yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for your time. And you. um, we'll keep talking at some other point if you want. Right. Thanks for all the work that you're doing. And yeah, I'm here. Feel free to reach out anytime. See ya. All right. Bye-bye.